You are listening to the Billy D's podcast. All right. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the program. I am absolutely thrilled that you are here. If you have never checked out our program before, we are primarily an interview and a commentary based podcast. You can find the Billy D's podcast pretty much anywhere podcasts are found. Today is going to be a commentary podcast. I am going to be talking about the Democrats. And the subject is, the Democrats are on a path to lose the election. And they have no one to blame but themselves. We're going to talk about that today. We're going to get that started. And let me start off by saying that I am not a partisan. If you're new to the program, I always have to go under the assumption that there's new people who are listening to the program. I don't have a partisan ideology. I'm not one to, you know, I can, I can, I can recognize good things that the Biden administration are doing. I could recognize good things that the Trump administration was doing. And equally, I could criticize them both. If you are in one of these camps that say, I will never vote Republican, or I will never vote Democrat, or I won't consider an independent because they're always a spoiler more on that later. If you're in any of those camps, okay, you are putting yourself in a situation where you can be easily manipulated because the powers that be will feed you what supports what you have already decided. And that's how, the, that's how they lure people in. And unfortunately, we have an electorate now that search for information based upon what they believe, what they want to be true, and what fits inside their bubble. When uh, a news program, program comes on that we don't like, we turn the channel. When something comes up in our feed, we swipe right past it, or even worse, we block it. We don't want to take the chance that anyone is going to interfere with how we feel the world should be. And I'm really of the mind that, you know, what we need to do is vote for the best person, the best person who is going to do the job to the best of their abilities. Now, the problem with that has been, quite frankly, that there hasn't been a whole lot of good choices. You know, uh, during my adult life, there's been very few times when people voted for a candidate. 1984, absolutely no question people voted for Ronald Reagan. 1992, absolutely no question people voted for Bill Clinton. 2008. Absolutely no question, people voted for Barack Obama. Now, here again, if you're making judgments about the people I just mentioned, you're you're missing the whole point. It doesn't matter if you liked these presidents or not. But they were definitely presidents. They were definitely candidates that inspired people to vote for them. What has been the case for most of those 30 or 40 years to one degree or another, has been what is described as the anti-vote, okay? Meaning that I don't particularly like choice A, but I know I don't like B. So therefore, I am going to vote for A because can't be any worse than B. So you vote against people now more than you vote for them. And here again, over the last 30 or 40 years, I don't know that Bush really inspired a lot of people. Um, we could go, you know, we, we, we could go through a bunch of them here. There just hasn't been people who grab people's attention like the rock stars of Reagan, uh, Clinton and Obama. And those people definitely had people voting for them. And in the last 10 years, this has been acutely the case. In 2016, the anti-Hillary vote was as responsible uh, as, as much as anything else for getting Donald Trump elected. 
And in 2020, there's absolutely no question that the anti-Trump vote is what got Biden elected. I don't know that Biden has ever been that inspiring of a politician. He, 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 he's obviously won enough to remain in government over the past 30 or 40 years. But I don't know that he has been a transformative figure. And 2020 was a bad year. There's absolutely no question about that. I mean, that was COVID was going on. And uh, all the chaos around Trump was swirling around. And I kind of believe that Biden was, this is what we have for right now. Okay. I kind of believe that he was meant to be a one trick pony. What you might call a one and done. Okay, we're going to put you in there for the anti-Trump vote. You are going to be the catcher for the anti-Trump vote. But then you're done. But that didn't work out. He's still in there and he's still planning to run as the candidate for the Democratic Party in 2024. Now... I don't know. I can't believe that somewhere in the Democratic Party, they know there's a problem. And I want to be, I want to be very clear here when I talk about Biden. This is not to disparage the man as a human being. There's way too much of that in today's politics, and I don't want to engage in that. But to be objective here, this is a man who is not the man he was four years ago, certainly was not the man he was eight years ago. He probably should have run in 2016, but Hillary won the coronation that year for the uh, nomination. And um, he's got limited intellectual capacity at this point. I believe that that's very evident. It's certainly become noticeable in his physical movements and the way he handles himself. I personally believe that this is a man who should be enjoying his retirement at this point. You know, sitting in the backyard, drinking some iced tea, playing catch with the dog, and watching the the uh, politics play out on the on the on the TV. This isn't a person who should be under the pressure of the leader of the free world. This is this is not the best option. So. I say that not mean-spirited at all. I, I just don't believe that this is the optimum case for what the Democrats should be putting forth. Now, I've heard rumors that uh, Newsom, Governor uh, Newsom could uh, pop out of the woodwork somewhere. Also, Michelle Obama is another one that's on the rumor, uh, rumor flight wheel. But, you know, at this point, my, my, my criticism is this. You've had four years. The Democratic Party has. The Democratic Party has had four years to cultivate a candidate. And I can't believe in the huge swath of people that are Democrats, up and comers. I can't believe in a country that's over 300 million strong. That in four years, the Democrats could not come up with a candidate to replace Joe Biden. Um, And during this four years, what makes matters even worse is there's been a shift in, in, in politics. The wokeism, as it's called, and of course, we, we don't, if you talk to somebody who's woke now, they'll say, what is woke? We don't know what woke is because that's, it's become a bad term. So now they've shifted to social justice warriors. And a year from now, you'll say, okay, so you're a social justice warrior. And they'll say, well, what is that? We don't know what that is, but here's what it is. It's, it's, it's a radical swing to the left. And as often happens, fairly innocuous movements that, like say for injustice, these are things that had some credibility. And they always start that way. They always start with a little bit of credibility. And they're innocuous in that who could criticize justice for all or, you know, taking care of people who are part of segments of our society who have been passed over or what have you. I mean, who could argue with that? But they, as they gain momentum, it's just like a bill in Congress. 
Okay, uh, we have a bill called Feed the Babies. Who could argue with that? But they start throwing other stuff in it. Okay, and if you criticize that bill, then you're against feeding babies. That's how it works. And that's exactly what these movements have done. And it's not just movements on, on, the, on the right or the left. But in this particular case, the radical left policies has left chaos at the border. Millions of people. The figure I heard the other day was that there could be as many as 40 million people in this country without the proper documentation. I don't know about that figure, but I, it's, it's got to be huge. It's got to be huge. We have cops that are practically beaten within an inch of their lives. And this, the assailants who do it walk free. No bail, nothing. Just, hey, walk out. Victims of crime being, are being prosecuted for fighting back. You know, if you have the audacity to fight someone who's robbing you and you hurt them, well, you can't do that. You violated that person's rights. What I would call trespassers and burglars are taking over people's homes under the ruse of squatters' rights. And the people who own the homes by penalty of jail or fines or what have you have to upkeep the property. They have to make the mortgage. They have to pay all the uh, the utility bills or they get arrested. And these people just stay in there under the ruse of squatters' rights. This is how insane things have gotten. And even people on the far left are crying, enough, we've had enough of this. Okay, a lot of liberal people who were all about some of these things a few years ago have to hire a bodyguard to walk out to their parking to, to walk out to the parking lot to get in their car in the evening. Now they're they're realizing now. Okay, maybe this isn't uh, such a good thing. So while all these things are happening, what are the Democrats doing? Instead of cultivating a candidate, instead of adopting some more moderate postures on some of these things, what are they doing? They're conjuring up investigations and lawsuits about Donald Trump. Donald Trump is the boogeyman in the last four years. That's all we've heard. And, and if you listen to the major news networks, the all the, the lawsuits, the indictments, the rhetoric. And in the meantime, as far as the Democrats are concerned, there's no rock star. There's no Bill Clinton. There's no Barack Obama. They just keep going along with Trump as the boogeyman. And we're going to stick with Biden, who at best was a one and done. So now we're in a climate in 2024 where we have a noticeable decline in the president of the United States with an equally unpopular vice president sailing into the November elections. Now, who do we blame? Well, in typical left-leaning fashion, it's not the people who caused the situation. It's always somebody else's fault. And in this particular case, the Democrats are blaming everyone but themselves. Unless they can, they can pull out some sort of a Hail Mary pass this summer and come up with a way to enter the fall in a better position, they are on their way to lose. Now, the Democrats, like I said, strategy has been to make a Trump what we might call the boogeyman. He's the boogeyman. Do we, we don't want the boogeyman in there. He's going to do all kinds of bad things. He's going to ruin our democracy. We got to vote for Biden. Huh? That's what you have to vote for. All right. Well, here's, what's, here's something that happened now that the Democrats didn't anticipate. Enter RFK Jr. Now, this is Bobby Kennedy's son. Bobby Kennedy Jr., RFK Jr. All of a sudden now, RFK is rising in the polls. And now, the Democrats have no candidate, but they have two boogeymen that they can warn you about. You can't have Trump and you can't have Kennedy because those guys are the boogeymen. You got to vote for Biden. huh? That's who you have to vote for. Um, this is amazing to me. 
this is absolutely amazing to me. Um, I'm going to play a little clip from Morning Joe. Now, I was years ago, I used to watch Morning Joe, not every day, but fairly frequently. Sometimes I agreed with him, sometimes I didn't, but I always felt, nah, on balance, he wasn't bad. Now, something happened to him. I don't know what it is, but listen to this clip talking how, about how terrible RFK is. And this terrible guy is going to help elect another terrible guy. And listen to the solemn, sad, exasperated tone in their voices when they talk about this. You're going to want to take a tissue and, 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 and listen to this and maybe shed a tear for our democracy. A guy we both know, Bobby Kennedy Jr., running, you know, as basically cover for Donald Trump. Uh, it's not a coincidence that some of Bobby Kennedy Jr.'s biggest contributors are Donald Trump's biggest contributors. So here we are all these years later. And it just this twisted path has led us to where somebody named Kennedy is putting himself in a position to elect Donald Trump president, a guy who whose life now is dedicated to reversing the work of Martin Luther King and Bobby Kennedy. You know, Joe, I would prefer not to soil the moment by talking about what Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is doing to himself, to his family, and to the country by his disservice of the way he's running for president right now. Yeah, um, I would like to point out to Morning Joe that, by the way, it's no coincidence that Trump and Bobby Jr. have the same contributors in a lot of cases because people are tired of the far-left bullshit that you and others have always been talking about that is infiltrating their lives and jobs to the point where people have to be careful what they say in regard to their own opinions because they might lose their job. People are getting tired of that bullshit. And that's why your candidate, Mr. Biden, is not getting the contributors that the other two are. You could put just about anybody with a moderate point of view, somewhere in the group of choices, and they would have the same contributors that Trump and RFK have because nobody wants to support this bullshit anymore. That's the real issue there, uh, Morning Joe. And yes, free speech is under attack. You know, I've uh, said before that free speech in its most, <clears throat> excuse me, in its most narrow terms is actually very, very specific in terms of the government shall pass no law that prohibits speech, especially in regard to criticism of the government. That's that's one of the, the key things in our democracy. But now with technology and everything, you have platforms that have become the public square. And big technology is controlling the valves on what gets through and what doesn't as much as anything else. And unfortunately, if you... Check out what happened with the Twitter files and everything else. Government has inserted itself into these situations. And it's getting to the point now where, you know, the media can rustle up a, a mob. If you say something on a, on a public platform that somebody somewhere decided was offensive, they can use the media to conjure up a, 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 a mob for lack of a better term, and this happens on the right and the left, that will start boycotting your sponsors, doing other things, and essentially force you to go away. This isn't the way the system was supposed to work. If you if you came up with ideas or, or suggestions that people didn't like, they just didn't listen to you. And the free market of ideas took over. And you have people now trying to manipulate that process. And a lot of times it involves big money. And over the past, I'm going to say five or 10 years, I started to notice that the world was getting upside down when people like Russell Brand started to make sense to me. <laughs> you know, I've listened to him and I'm, hmm, that guy's got a point. And I started to say, wow, 
maybe the world is getting upside down. And uh, now I'm sure. Now I'm sure that the world is upside down. And I'll tell you why. Because I now agree with Frank Luntz. <laughs> and I do not know how that happened. How in, in, in what uh, time of warp are we in? That I agree with Tom Luntz, but uh, and with, with Frank Luntz, I'm sorry. I'm not sure how I how that happened. But anyway, here's Frank Luntz talking about RFK Jr. And I'll warn you here, if he does get the 15 percent and gets into the debates, he's going to hurt Biden more than he hurts Trump. And this is why the Democrats are in an organizational way spending millions of dollars to keep Kennedy off the ticket. And I say this to any viewer, I don't know where the camera is right now. I got a bunch of them. It's right here. Okay. The idea that the Democratic National Committee is spending money to prevent a legitimate campaign and candidate to keep them off the ballot, that is the most anti-democratic thing I've heard in 2024. I know that they're doing it. I know, understand the reason why they're doing it. It is not defensible. When our democracy is under threat, when people are so, they're already concerned that we've lost the rule of law, that we've lost support, that we don't believe in the credibility of elections right now. Yeah. To actively keep someone off the ballot who's getting 10% support, that is indefensible. And uh, they're going to pay for it. That's exactly right. Frank Luntz there again, 100%. And here again, this is money that the Democrats are spending to keep the opposition down. And they're doing it because they don't have a candidate that they can lift up, not even in the best circumstances. Um, and I, 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 this is, this is maddening. It's absolutely maddening. It, it is sheer manipulation of them, of the media and the political system that we have. And uh, here again, it's uh, the Democrats have no choice. They have no candidate. They have no recognizable platform except being unable to speak the name of victims of murder committed by illegal border crossers. Um, and I, I, I don't care how you divvy this up. Uh, it's bad optics when the president of the United States can't even acknowledge to one degree or another, how bad you want to say it is, is beside the point that there have been horrendous murders committed by people who have illegally crossed the border. When you can't even say it, it does not play well with the public. And this is my point. It's a horrible candidate and a horrible way to present a candidate. It is a horrible way to present a campaign, and it is a horrible way to present someone who is going to be running for the office of president where he is supposed to have the best defenses and the best interests of United States citizens at his focal observation, his, his focal purpose. Um, I don't know what to say about that. This is where the left has hijacked the Democratic Party. And now there's been a cultural shift underneath their feet. There's different things happening. And there's, there's nothing that they have to offer other than Trump is the boogeyman. You can only go so far with that. And I, my background is marketing. And what we used to call comparison branding only has a, a limited effectiveness. And what that is, is let's say you have Coke and you have Pepsi and you put them both on a table and you ask somebody to taste them both. Which one do they like better? And let's say you're a Coke person and the person sips the Coke and says, oh, and tries the Pepsi and says, oh, I like the Coke better. The Coke is better. I like the, the Coke better than the Pepsi. The only problem with that is even though your comparison wins, your brand won that comparison, what you've done is you've taken your, 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 uh, your opposition, your competition, and you've elevated them to the, to the brand that is to be compared against. Okay. Uh, it, it's by, it, it becomes the brand that other brands are compared against. So it kind of defeats your purpose. And what they're doing, what, what, what the Democrats have relied on is this comparison branding with candidates. And it's always ours isn't as bad as yours. 
That's the comparison. But in the process of that, the constant comparing, especially when there's a cultural shift, the taste, as it were, in the public is beginning to change. All you are doing is calling notice to your own deficiencies. And that is what's happening here with the Democratic Party. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to play one more clip for you. This uh, past week or so, there was outrage on the left, all outrage uh, this week when a clip surfaced of RFK Jr. saying that he believed Biden was a bigger threat to democracy than Trump. Shocking. How could he possibly say that? Now, this out- outrage, uh, from from my point of view, came from the media and all the social justice warriors out there because Nobody that I know that lives in the real world could listen to this clip that I'm about to play you and not concede. And by the way, a lot of my left-leaning friends have conceded, some of them reluctantly, that RFK has some very legitimate points here. Uh, President Biden is a much worse threat to democracy. And the reason for that is President Biden is the first candidate in history, the first president in history that has used the federal agencies to censor political speech, so to censor his opponent. I, you know, I can say that because I just won a case in the Federal Court of Appeals and now before the Supreme Court that shows that he started censoring not just me. For 37 hours after he took the oath of office, he was censoring me. No president in the country has ever done that. The greatest threat in democracy is not somebody who questions election returns, but a president of the United States who used the power of his office to force the social media companies, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, to open a portal and give the access to that portal to the FBI, to the CIA, to the IRS, to CISA, to NIH, to censor his political critics. President Biden, for the first first president in history, to use the secret, his power over the Secret Service, to deny Secret Service protection to one of his political opponents for political reasons. He's weaponizing the federal agents. That is exactly right. And, you know, here again, uh, RFK started as a Democrat. And the DNC showed a viable candidate the door, much as they did to Bernie Sanders in 2016. You know, I, even if you didn't want, if, if I was a Democrat from a marketing st- uh, standpoint, and Bernie Sanders at that time was riding really high in the polls with young people, And if I was managing the Democratic Party during that time, even if I knew down deep that I didn't want him to be the candidate, I wouldn't have showed him the door. There were there were a lot of things that you could do from a marketing standpoint with that. And um, they didn't do anything. And they showed him the door and said, don't let it hit you in the ass on the way out. And it hurt them in 2016. It absolutely did. It deflated the hopes of millions of young people. And what they should have done was get those people on board. And they didn't. Now, in RFK's case, uh, when, when just shushing them out the door didn't work, he's obviously gaining new life on his own now. Now they're trying to shut him down. So here again, it's it's we can't have Trump. We can't have RFK. We have to have Grandpa Joe. Huh? That's what that's what your choice is supposed to be. That is the only choice that you should have or even be thinking about. Hillary Clinton, the other day, I don't have the clip, uh, said uh, tough. You have two choices. Well, you got three. And uh, if if the obvious choice is supposed to be Biden, if that's the implication there, then no, I, I don't. I, I don't believe we need to swallow that. I don't believe we need to swallow that. Now, I'm not coming out for a, a particular candidate yet, but I got to say, RFK, if you've been um, if you've been taking some of the rhetoric about the negative stuff about RFK, about how radical he is, how he's anti-vax and all this. You really need to research him because it's, we don't have, I'll tell you what we don't have in today's society is we don't have time for nuance. It's one thing to say about the mRNA um, um, vaccinations 
that they could be problematic and let's make sure they're safe. You should be able to say that without getting thrown out, thrown off the airwaves. You should be able to say that. And saying that is one thing. It doesn't say that other vaccines are necessarily problematic. Um, but it's, it's just saying that when you package something up, slap a label on it, bottle it up, package it up, throw it out the door and say, you got to take this. Is that, is that wise? And I don't know where that became a radical notion. And this goes for a lot of the uh, positions that RFK has. And we're going to, uh, our plan is to have some RFK uh, supporters on this program uh, to talk in more detail about some of what some of his policies are. What I'm trying to point out in today's program is that the strategy of the Democrats right now is to make him the boogeyman, just like they made Trump the boogeyman. How many more people are going to come along that they are going to vilify as opposed to coming up with a real candidate, a real, live, breathing, vibrant candidate that is going to inspire America? Where is that candidate? And I would ask the same thing to the Republicans as far as that goes. I would have to say that, uh, you know, Trump isn't the same person that he was in 2016 either, but the rate of decline is nowhere near as bad as it's been with, with Joe Biden. Um, I can't imagine how anybody in the DNC thinks that he is going to get through campaign season, especially when it comes to debates and stuff like that, that he, I, I, I very much hope he better be taking um, because he should be. Uh, and then beyond that, get through another four years. And then until the next election in the January that follows, that's going to be five years for somebody who's just barely skating by as it is. I can't believe that the DNC um, believes that's a good idea. If you were looking to vote for someone, if you have given up hope that you can't vote for someone, you just have to choose which one is worse between Biden and Trump. I would very strongly suggest you consider RFK. He's more of a moderate than what you might expect. And I believe, I don't even like being called a moderate because that still puts me on the scale. I like to consider myself a 360 degree type person. I examine something all the way around, not just from the right or the left or the middle, but let's just say what happened to common sense. We hear so much about the radical right and we hear so much about the radical left. Well, all right. If you want to use the term moderate, let's use it. And uh, I'm a radically moderate person. And maybe more of us radically moderate people need to have a voice in what's going on. And stop letting the extremes guide the narrative. And that seems like what always happens is the extremes are guiding the narrative. And unless the Democratic Party does something really quick uh, with what's going on with the election this year, um, I, I don't know that this is going to be a good outcome. They might pull it out. I don't know if, if, if they can get the, the, the negative vibes high enough for Trump. It's not because they're going to elevate their candidate. And we deserve better than that. Maybe they're going to pull a, a, a candidate out of the woodwork somewhere during the convention, all these rumors. I don't know. But I got to tell you, this is a sad state of affairs. And right now, Kennedy, in my opinion, is a breath of fresh air. Consider this guy. Check him out. And maybe he, he, this election is, we need him in this election to change the talking points. It just can't be pointing the finger at the other guy saying, check him out. He is so bad. You got to vote for me. There's got to be a better, uh, a better way to do things. All right. I'm Billy Dees. Um, you can find me on Twitter, which is now called X. I am on X at Billy Dees. Uh, a lot of my links to my various social media platforms are on, in my bio on X, but I got to tell you that X is pretty much my social media home and uh, I'm on the other platforms as well. And you, you're more than welcome to search me out, but for late, uh, late breaking news and uh, things happening with the podcast, uh, please do check me out on X, the former Twitter. You can find the Billy D's podcast wherever podcasts are found. We are on all the major platforms. Um, this is Saturday and uh, this is April 6th that we are in production today. Our next live is planned for this coming Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Do check us out and I will talk to you then. 
I'm Billy Dees and host of the self-titled podcast, The Billy Dees Podcast. We are primarily an interview and a commentary-based podcast featuring authors and creators talking about their craft, advocates for community issues, and myself and an array of co-hosts discussing current events. There's no partisan ranting and raving going on here, just great content. You can find The Billy Dees Podcast on your favorite platform and on Twitter at Billy Dees. Thank you, and I hope you listen in.